What's going on everybody, it's Carmine from Barmine Tech and today we're going to be talking about TrueNAS Scale. So this is an operating system that works with like NAS systems, so you can build out NAS and depending on which flavor of TrueNAS you pick, you can either have some virtualization containers available or you just have a basic NAS software. They also have an enterprise edition which is going to be used by larger scale companies. But we're going to be working with the TrueNAS Scale version today and the first thing we're going to do is go over and grab the OS off the site, so let's do that and then we'll start the install. So the first thing to do is come over to TrueNAS.com and then over here they have software and you can see we have the different versions. Today we're working with Scale and right over here it says how it's integrated for apps, Linux containers, and VMs. So that's what we're looking to do so we could add on our Docker containers or the TrueNAS apps as they say. What we need to do is come over to download Scale and then from here you can either sign in or give them an email or you could skip it and just get the ISO. From there you just need to burn it onto a USB or if you use like a Ventor or whatever you might use uh, and then we can put it in the system to set up. So once you have that all set up and you can put it into the machine, we're going to start with the install now. So after you get your machine rebooted and you have your install media in, you're going to want to get into the boot menu. As you can see that's where I am right now. I'm going to select my USB drive. And here's that box that I was just talking about that's going to ask if I want to up install upgrade. It'll give me sh access to the shell or I can reboot or shut it down. So I'm going to click install. We're going to select the hard drive that I want to use. So I do have two hard drives in here. I have an 8 terabyte and then I have 120 gig. So I'm going to select my 120 gig. And then you can see that I'm going to have OK highlights. So I'm going to click enter. It's going to give me a warning that's going to remove everything on the data. So I'm going to click yes. And we are going to make an admin account just in case we have an issue when it comes to accessing the web portal. So this is just going to give us another account just as a backup in case to use. So now it's just going to ask if I want to create swap. So I'm going to give it swap because I don't have a lot of memory in this box. So I'll give it some of the hard drive to give some swap memory. So now it's going to start the TrueNAS install. Maybe takes about 5 to 10 minutes. So it shouldn't be too long and we'll be right back when it's all done. Okay, so the install is pretty quick, it only took a few minutes, and now it's just telling to remove the media, and then we're going to restart the machine. So I'm going to take out the USB drive, reboot it, and then we should be all set to load into the TrueNAS. After you remove the install media and you reboot the machine, it does a little more initial config, and then you can see over here it gives you the IP info to access the web page. So for me, there's two IPs, and that's because I have two NICs in this machine. So I'm going to go to the .16 one, and we're going to log into the portal. So now over here you can see we're at the TrueNAS scale page and it is giving me a warning that I'm using HTTP instead of HTTPS. I'm local so I'm not too concerned but if you want to use HTTPS you can. And we're just going to log in with that admin account that we made previously. And from here we are in the TrueNAS dashboard. So the first thing that I do want to do is change the credentials and add another user account. So to do that we're going to come over to credentials over here on the left we're going to make a local user we're going to come up here to the right and we're going to click add uh, i'm going to make my account i'm going to give myself a password Ooh. and then other than that i think we're all good and i'm just going to scroll down and hit save okay so now that we have the new user set up i just like to come over and test it so i'm just going to lock out and I'd like to see if I'm able to log in with the user before I do anything to the admin user that I set up just to make sure and we look like we have an issue with this one. So I, I ran into this issue in my test machine as well. I don't know if I'm just configuring my user because I know I'm able to log in as the like the Samba share that we put up so I'm not sure how I'm making the difference for the web portal user. But we'll figure that out maybe in another time. So first thing we're going to do is come back over to Dashboard. So this would be your homepage when you do log in to TrueNAS Scale. It's going to give you some basic info on your machine and some maybe a guidance or whatever. We have CPU info, we have our memory info, and then we have our network status. And there's also the tab for the backup jobs if you run those. As you can see, uh, not really much going on right now, so we're going to start working through. So the first thing to do is come over to Storage. And we need to create a pool so i do have a eight terabyte hdd in here and we need to come over and just make a quick pool so it's going to show our available disk and then we're just going to name it so i'm just going to call it pool one i'm going to click next 
So the first one over here is how we want to set up the disc. So I'm going to set up as a stripe because I only have one disc. If you have multiple discs, you might want to set up in a mirror or a RAID, but I only have one, so that's all I can do. We're going to select the disc size, and then other than that, everything's all good. So I'm going to go to save and go to review because all these others are optional. There's nothing really solid needed. I'm going to create the pool. We're going to confirm it because it's going to wipe the disc, and this takes about a minute or so, and then we're good to start working with the pool we just made. So you can see it's already at 92 and we're just about done already so we'll give it another second and we should be good to go over and make our data set okay so now our pools made we have pool one it gives us some info on the disk the uh, the usage the zfs health but we're not running zfs so that's okay and then over here it just does another like health check and if you have smart running you could do that the next set is going to be to come over to data sets and here is where we're going to make our data set that goes out of the pool. So it's a little confusing because you need your pool, which is your set of disks. And then from there, you need to make a data set. And then that's like organizing so you could use it. And then from there, you got to make a share. But we'll make it all make sense. And we're going to start keep, and we're going to keep going through. So we're going to come over here to the right and we're going to click add data set. And then it's already selecting the parent pool. So I'm just going to call it data set one. And we're going to leave it generic because the default's fine with me. I'm going to click OK. And now you see over here we have data set. And the next step is to come over to shares. So now this is how we're going to share out that data set so we could use it on different systems. So if you want to use your NAS on Windows, you're going to have to add SMB. And then over here we're just going to come to these drop downs and select our data set that we just made. Other than that, we're all set. If you want to change any of these defaults, if not, you're all good. I don't want to set up any ACLs, so we're okay. And then we're going to set it to automatically start when the machine reboots. That was going to be the same if you're using like a Unix system or you want to use iSCSI. You just got to come over here and configure them. But now you can see over here that SMB is working. So I'll just whack whack to it really quick and we can test it out. So you can see over here I was able to whack whack to it. And it's funny because the Carmine account that I just made worked. So I need to figure out what's going on with the permissions. But now we're in our new SMB share that we just made out of TrueNAS. So coming back to the portal, the next tab is data protection. So this is like backup jobs or R syncs or like moving the data off site. If you have like an offsite backup or additional storage somewhere else, we're not gonna be working with this because I don't have any of these configured right now. So we'll move over to network. This is gonna show you all your network interfaces. So like I said, I have two NICs and that's why I have two addresses. Really all you're gonna be working with in here is if you wanna change the IP address. We already talked about the credentials tab. So next we have virtualization. You can see it gives me a memory, uh, it gives me a warning saying that there's only available just under 5 gigs for virtualization. I only have 8 gigs in this machine, so there's not much I could do. So right now I'm going to skip over virtualization, but if you have a machine that has better hardware, more memory, better CPU, stuff like that, virtualization will definitely be an option. But what we are going to talk about is the applications. So over here would be like our Docker containers, but it's the TrueNAS setup. So we do need to choose a pool first so we can set up the applications. So we're gonna select pool one that we just made and now it's going to configure it. This is only gonna take a minute or so. So I'll just give it a second to work. Now that we have the pool chosen, you can see the app services are running so we can come over to discover apps. Okay, so these are some of the apps that are available. These are just some of the basic ones, but if you come over here to view all, it's gonna show you all the available apps. So there are about a hundred apps available by default. It will be pretty much the common ones you'll see in like all the home lab templates, but there also are some others. There are some others that I haven't seen before, like Terraria is over here. We have some more smart home controllers that are new and just some different stuff. So if you want to take a look around, they have a lot of good options. And there also is if we scroll up the availability to add our own catalog. So you see over here where it says installed catalogs, we can click manage. And then you could add one if you could find one online. So if you go through like the TrueNAS subreddits or maybe whatever else, you could probably find some other catalogs put on here and then you could have additional apps. So I'm just gonna come back over to applications. So now that I'm back over here to applications, we're just gonna go and install our first app. So I saw Dashi is in here. So I'm going to look for that. So here's Dashi all the way at the bottom. So now it's just gonna give us a quick overview and I'm gonna click install. It's gonna just give me a little warning about it. That's okay, I'm gonna click agree. 
and then the install only takes about a minute or so and this is just some of the configurable options we could do so i'm going to go with that i'm going to click install now of course if you were choosing an a app that maybe you had to map a share to or anything you would do that in here in the meantime while this deploys we're just going to go over a couple more of the options and then we'll swing back to the app after it's done so over here in the next tab is reporting so this is just going to give you some system info like your cpu usage the temperature and then if you probably have a graphics card it'll show that in here too so if you're just trying to see how your machine's functioning you could do that over here next we have the system settings so there's the update tab so if you want to do an update if it's available it's in there you have the general tab where you could just see some of the basic info on the system but the one that you might be interested in is advanced and if you scroll down here that's where if you have a graphics card you can set that up in here to be used so if you do have a gpu in the system you just come in here and configure it unfortunately i don't have a gpu in this machine so can't set that up but that's how you would get that going and then we'll just swing back over here and you can see now that dashi is running so i do have it open up here and i'm just going to click on the web portal and here's dash she's all set to run so that is all good now we have our first application running in TrueNAS. but that's the basic config of TrueNAS, and we could have everything up and running in just about 10 minutes or less so TrueNAS looks to be really user friendly it wasn't too hard to set up and it has a lot of good features in there so that's TrueNAS, and we're all good with that yeah so that was how we set up TrueNAS. super simple i mean in all the install maybe took about five minutes and the initial setup took probably about another five minutes depending on how quick you go through the options in the past i didn't really understand like why TrueNAS was so popular and now i'm starting to realize it because you can run your storage you can run your virtualization and then you could also run some docker containers natively on it so you don't need to make additional machines to run docker and everything else so so now i am actually really intrigued in TrueNAS, and i kind of wish i had another machine that i could run TrueNAS on but that might be a project down the road but that's how we set up TrueNAS. I hope you guys all enjoyed the video. If you find it useful, if you want to like, comment, subscribe, it helps the channel and the videos grow. I also have a new Instagram page that I made for the channel. So that's going to be barmine underscore tech. If you go on Instagram, it's just going to be some of the similar content you're going to see on the YouTube shorts that I've been posting and just some other content that I've been working on as I go throughout the week. Other than that, I have the Discord server. If you're interested, you can join up. There'll be a link below. It's just a spot where we chat about home lab projects and we help each other out when we need it. And that's really about it. I want to thank you all for watching and I will see you in the next video.